biological evolution is decent with modification or the gradual changes that take place in an organism from time to time is called as evolution. Theories of biological evidence is put across by Lamarckism and Darwin. Jean Baptiste Lamarck and Charles Darwin as we all know Charles Darwin is called father of evolution. The organs which perform the same function but differ in their origin and structure are called analogous organs and they lead to what type of evolution? Convergent evolution. Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another revision class of chapter 7 of second PUC called Evolution. Myself, Bishobarani from the Department of Biology, Vidyashram Prinosity College, the Temple of Excellence in Mysore. Let me move on to the important concepts what you are going to study in this particular chapter called evolution and what will be the weightage of marks and what type of questions are going to appear from this particular chapter called evolution. So let us uh, understand what is the weightage of marks for this particular chapter called evolution. So the weightage of marks for this chapter 7 called evolution is 6 marks. So what will be the type of marks, what will be the type of question asked for 6 marks? That is one marker question, you will have one question and two marker question, you will have one question and three marker question, you will have one question. So the total weightage of marks for this particular chapter called evolution is 6 marks where it is distributed like this. The one marker question, you get one question, two marker question, one question and three marker question, one question. Sometimes even for three marker question, you may have like 2 plus 1 or it might be asked for 3 marks. So this is the weightage of marks for this particular chapter called evolution. Moving on to the chapter introduction, what is evolution? What is evolution? As we know evolution is very change, change is part and parcel of this biosphere. So biological evolution is decent with modification or the gradual changes that take place in an organism from time to time is called as evolution. So the present complex forms of life have emerged from simpler forms. So from simplicity to complexity or in simple terms if you want to define evolution, biological evolution is decent with modification. Decent means origin with modification. So the present complex forms of life have emerged from simple forms by gradual modifications over millions of years. Evolution is called as an orderly change from one form to another form. And what do you call that branch of science which deals with the study of evolution? It is called evolutionary biology. That is study of history of life forms is called evolutionary biology. So in this particular chapter, you'll be studying about the origin of life on earth and related evidence. So how life originated on this planet earth and what are the evidences that prove that life originated on this planet earth. Now what are we uh, definitions uh, as I already studied about the definition of evolution then origin of life there are various theories put across to explain the origin of life like theory of special creation which states that life was created by supernatural power called God. So that theory was not accepted as it had no proper evidence to prove it. Then, then came the theory of abiogenesis which states that life comes from non-living things. Yes, of course, again, this theory was not accepted as it did not have any proper evidence to prove. Then the third theory came, theory of biogenesis which states that life comes from pre-existing life. So which was put across by uh, Francisco Reddy, then Spallanzini, then Louis Pasteur, then Ure Miller's experiments, that is Ure uh, Miller's experiment which states that uh, there was uh, chemical reactions happening in the prebiotic atmosphere and the reactions of the important molecules that were found in the atmosphere like methane, hydrogen, oxygen, like methane, hydrogen, etc. The, the interaction of all this led to the origin of life on earth. So there is Stanley Miller's experiment, then evolution of life forms and the theory and the various evidences for evolution like paleontological evidence. Paleontological means uh, for study of fossils. So fossil study uh, may also give an evidence for the origin of life. Then morphological and anatomical evidences, biogeographical evidences, biochemical evidences and evidences by 
natural selection. Then theories of biological evidence is put across by Lamarckism and Darwin, Jean Baptiste Lamarck and Charles Darwin. As we all know, Charles Darwin is called father of evolution. Then mechanism of evolution was explained by Hardy Wienberg principle. Then account on evolution that is origin and evolution of man. So these are all the things what you are going to study in this particular chapter called evolution. So what type of questions are going to be asked pertaining to this particular chapter? So one marker question as I already said one marker the weightage of marks will be for six marks. So one marker question one, two marker question one and three marker question one. So what is abiogenesis? It is a process of appearance of first forms of life slowly from non-living molecules. So abiogenesis states that life comes from non-living things. So it is a process of the appearance of first forms of life slowly from non-living molecules. Which theory is also referred to as chemical theory and naturalistic theory which is called oparin haldane theory is called as what? It is also called chemical theory and naturalistic theory. What is paleontology? Paleontology is a branch of science that deals with the study of fossils. What is a fossil? Fossil is an ancient remain. Fossil is nothing but study of ancient remain. Then define analogous organs. So we know there are two types of analogous organs and homologous organs. The organs which perform the same function but differ in their origin and structure are called analogous organs and they lead to what type of evolution? Convergent evolution. Define homologous organs. It refers to the organs which have similar embryonic origin, have same origin but perform different functions and they lead to what type of evolution? Divergent evolution. Then when was the earth supposed to have been formed and when did life appear on the earth? So earth was supposed to have been formed 4.5 billion years before. Life appeared about 4 billion years ago. Then what is evolution according to Hardy Wienberg? Disturbance in genetic equilibrium that is change of frequency of alleles in a population would be considered as evolutionary change. Then name the gases Miller used in his experiments on origin of life, methane, ammonia, hydrogen and water vapor were the gases that the same gases that were prevailing in the prebiotic atmosphere or the first atmosphere was the same gases which Miller used in his Stanley Miller's experiment. Who probably did not eat meat among Ramapithecus, Australopithecus and Homo habilis? Homo habilis probably did not eat meat. Write the order in which Neanderthal, Homo habilis and Homo erectus appeared on the earth. Straight the brain capacity of each of them. What is the order first in which Neanderthal and Homo erectus appeared? First Homo habilis, Homo erectus and Neanderthals had brain capacities of how much? So 650 to 800 cc, 900 cc and 1400 cc respectively. Then three marker question. How did Miller demonstrate experimentally the chemical evolution that happened 3 billion years ago? So this is the very important diagram called Miller's experiment. Stanley Miller's, Stanley Miller's experiment. Miller's experiment. So theory of, so this Stanley Miller's experiment is uh, experimentally done to prove the theory of chemical evolution uh, which uh, stated that the prebiotic gases that is the uh, methane, hydrogen, water vapor, all these were responsible for the occurrence of life forms. So theory of chemical evolution states that the first form of life could have come from pre-existing non-living organic, organic molecules like RNA, proteins, etc. So what, what is this Miller's experiment all about? He created conditions similar to the primitive earth in the laboratory. So primitive earth means the first earth that was created which is called as prebiotic atmosphere. He tried to give the same conditions in his laboratory and electric discharge was produced by using electrodes in closed flasks containing methane, hydrogen, ammonia and water vapor. So this is the, so here you can see methane, ammonia, hydrogen and hydrogen and water vapor. So the temperature was kept at 800 degrees centigrade. So what was the thing? And after a week, he observed formation of amino acids. Such molecules must have reacted among themselves to form giant self-replicating molecules, the first form of life. So here, so the liquid water in the trap. So this is called as a coolant, cooling jacket. Cooling jacket. So here you can see the water is boiling and here is the vacuum pump where all the, and here is electrodes 
which generate energy so sparks hence this is also called as spark discharge chamber this is called as spark discharge chamber so here you can see the cooling jacket then the water droplet then the water containing organic compounds when it is analyzed it was found that the first life forms it was almost similar to the first life forms then what is adaptive radiation describe one example of adaptive radiation what is adapt this is very important from examination point of view adaptive radiation is the process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and literally radiating to the other areas or habitats so how do we define the word called adaptive radiation adaptive radiation is the process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and literally radiating to the other areas of habitats so what are the classical example you can give for adaptive darwin's finches are an example of adaptive radiation what is it there were many varieties of small black birds in the galapagos island which were known as what darwin's finches darwin reasoned that after originating from a common seed eating stock the finches must have radiated to different geographical locations in the same island and undergone adaptive changes so he took the darwin's finches as a classical example to explain what is adaptive radiation then how does industrial melanism in western bitil area illustrate the action of natural selection this is a very important uh, question that is asked in the examination uh, it's a classical example for industrial melanism is a classical example to explain natural selection so industrial melanism means evolution of dark body color that is western bitil area carbonaria moth that lives in habitat blackened by industrial soot it was based on observation of peppered moth population in england that is in 1850 it was uh, it as studied by bernard kettlewell peppered moths were pale gray winged that is bitten bitil area individual which lives on trees in urban areas before industrial revolution when trees used to be covered by lichens after industrial revolution dark winged moth called bitten bitil area appeared in the same area so this is because soot released from coal fire industries covered the trees and white winged moth did not survive due to predators as you know the gray colored moth could survive uh, as it was camouflaging the background of the tree trunk uh, due to the soot that was uh, uh, eliminated by the industries so whereas the white colored moth could not survive as they could be easily detected by the predator birds so so the, uh, nature selects the best to survive and the weak to perish so dark winged moth survived due to escape from the predations by camouflaging because you know the background of the tree trunk was dark and even the dark winged moth could be could not be easily identified by the predator but so it could escape from the predators so it was able to survive whereas in pre industrial period the white colored moth survived better as the trees were covered with lichen so that is before the onset of the industries then uh, what are the learning outcomes of this particular so at the end of this chapter called evolution chapter 7 called evolution what are the things you all are going to learn you will be able to explain the origin of life and the theories explaining it as i said there are different theories put across to explain the origin of life how life originated on this planet earth like theory of special creation then theory of uh, abiogenesis or it is also called spontaneous generation theory of biogenesis then explain darwin's idea of evolution that is survival of the fittest according to him the one who is uh, fine and fit will survive and the weak will perish describe the evidences for evolution from paleontology embryology biogeography and comparative anatomy describe divergent evolution and convergent that is analogous organs and homologous organs explain the mechanism of evolution according to darwin and de rice explain hardy weinberg principle and the factors that affect the genetic equilibrium give a brief account of evolution of plants and animals through the geological time scale describe the origin and evolution of man all these are the things which you are going to study at the end of this particular chapter called evolution moving on to the a small uh, brief recap uh, through the flow charts that is theory of theories of origin of life special creation panspermia theory that is the spores that came from the uh, atmosphere they they when they fell uh, when they fell uh, in the ocean they were uh, emerging out as life forms spontaneous generation as i said theory of 
uh, that is theory of A by Genesis, which states that life comes from non-living things continuously, spontaneously. Theory of chemical evolution, as I said, the prebiotic atmosphere had the uh, gases like uh, methane, hydrogen, uh, then ammonia, water vapor, which were responsible for the formation of uh, complex organism like the life forms. Then evidences of evolution, there are different evidences put across, that is paleontological evidence, anatomical and morphological evidence, embryological evidences, biochemical evidences and biogeographical evidence. So various evidences have been put across to prove the evolution. Then adaptive radiation, you can give the example of Darwin finches as I explained, then marsupials of Australia and even adaptive convergence. Then theories of evolution, as I already said, Lamarck's theory. Lamarck also the stated the theory of uh, inheritance of acquired characters, which he gave in a classical example of giraffe. Then Darwin's theory, as we all know that Darwin is a, uh, is called as a, he was a naturalist uh, who traveled in a ship called uh, HMS Beagle for uh, many a long years and all the ideas what he formulated during his travel, he formulated them in the form of laws which is called as Darwin, Charles Darwinism, then mutation theory, modern synthetic theory. Then Hardy-Weinberg principle, uh, which are the factors which are affected, that is through gene migration, genetic drift, mutation, genetic recombination and natural selection. Then evolution, that is evolution in plants and animals. In plants, that is we come across Paleozoic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic. And in animals, Carboniferous, Permian, then Triassic, then Jurassic and Tertiary, then Cretaceous and Quaternary. Then origin and evolution of man first, that is Dryopithecus, Ramapithecus, Homo erectus, Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo sapiens, that we call it as primitive man, and Homo, Homo sapiens, that is modern man. So this is the origin and evolution of man. Hope you all have understood the important concepts of this particular chapter from examination point of view and the type of probable type of questions that might be asked from this particular chapter called evolution. Thank you.